Pokemon Go for a while. Uh, I mean, no way in the top of the league, level 19 by now. Uh, but I've been interested in, in this kind of real world games or pervasive games, as they used to call them, uh, for a long time. Uh, and it came out. The Pokemon Go Plus. And of course, I needed one. So I've been playing with this one for two days. And I really need to make this presentation of it now. Because it's such a crappy product. No, really. I show this to people. Uh, and nobody else has bought them nearby. So, so when they see it, it's the first time. And everybody says, wow, it's so effective. So what can you do with it? Well, basically, it blinks and buzzes when, when things happen. So when there's a Pokestop or when there's a Pokemon nearby, it blinks and buzzes in, in a bunch of different ways. And then I can click the button in the middle. Uh, and when I click the button, I get the Pokestop or I get the Pokemon. And it's so effective. And that's what people say. Wow, that's so effective. I can get all of them. Yeah, you can. But that's the problem. Because it buzzes and you get the Pokemon. And then it's done. And it wasn't that much of, of choices in the original game either. But still, you can choose which ball to use. Right? And you can fail or you can succeed in, in, in flipping the ball and things like that. And now the re <laughs> they effectively reduce the game to if it buzzes push the button. Because there's no reason not to push the button. If it lights up and says, if it lights blue, it, it means there's a Pokestop nearby. And of course I get all the Pokestop. I did get all the Pokestop in the original name also. But now it just blinks and then I know I caught something. I have no idea what, but something. And if it blinks green, it's a Pokemon. And I don't know which Pokemon. If it blinks yellow, it's a Pokemon I have ne never caught before. So I can actually separate between Pokemon I have never caught before and other Pokemon. And that of course means if, if I happen to be hunting for, for new Pokemon, if the Chinese is yellow, I will pick up my phone and then I will go into special balls and raspberries or, or all that stuff. But otherwise, well, it's a Pokemon, so I push the button. If it buzzes, I push the button. So they're, they're to reduce all choices. I have nothing left to play, it's just pushing a button. They reduce the gameplay to pushing a button. And it makes it so boring, sadly. And this could be a good device. It isn't right now could be a good device. Because I don't have to make the choice in the moment. And I think this is a big difference between these kind of types of games, the pervasive games or the, the in the real world games, and computer games overall. And I think they're designing a computer game overall, and that might be the problem. Because in a computer game overall, usually it's, now in this moment I need to do this and then I make a choice. If you would redesign this, for example, make a list where I can click in these are the Pokemon I'm interested in. I need to level up, so therefore I'm catching uh, pigeons and, and other things that are easy to level up and, and, and get the uh, experience points for. Or, in my case, uh, I really want the Eevees and I really want uh, yeah, the Magikarps because I want to evolve that one. And I want those too. But I caught them already, so it's so it blinks green, just like all the other Pokemons. So I have no idea. It could be one of those, and if it is one of those, I would have put, put more balls into it. Uh, and I would have done other things. But I have no idea. So it buzzes, and I push the button. If I would have, for example, a list when in the game, and decide these are the Pokemons that I'm interested in. I click in the Eevee, I click in the, the, the Magikarp, because those are the... Oh, now it buzzes. There's something nearby, I push the button, I play the game. Done. 
did that feel like playing a game? Not to me. Did it to you? So, if I could make that list, if I could say I'm interested in these, and then it would buzz in a different way, or light up in a different way, then I could make a choice. And that choice is made before, and that's the difference in these type of games. If it's made before, it's still playing the game, because I do it in my everyday, and it goes on all the time. So please make that change. That's the big one. And then there's a lot of kind of technical issues and stuff like that, but yeah, I knew they would be there. The other thing, please make that change. And please make the bossing different for different things. Because I don't want to look at this light. This is a problem display. And the one thing this is good at is removing the display because there's a buzzer. And a buzzer can buzz slowly, fast, or in other patterns. And then I would learn their patterns and I wouldn't have to look at it at all. I could still play the game just as I play it now. That's my short review of the first physical device created for a crazy or real world game. Not that good right now. Uh, it's got a lot of potential. So, we just finished the first episode of this new show, Let's Play.se. I mean, it's not Let's Play videos for you who thought it would be. And it won't be in the future either. There might be some of that, but it's more about playing. Uh, if you like it, I hope you stay. I hope you join. Uh, I hope you leave me a comment. Uh, if you don't, that's fine too, but please leave a good remark anyway, because it doesn't hurt, does it? Also, sound and things, yeah, they, it will be better. Uh, this is the first one and I thought it was better to get going than to just uh, wait until I have all the stuff. So right now it's kind of a bit crappy sound, a bit crappy video quality. Uh, it will be better. So, I hope you liked it. Uh, and I hope you leave me a comment if you agree or if you disagree on how, what I think about the Pokemon Go Plus. See you around!